मीनवेल सानमित्रा जॉइन मुझे एक कॉल आया था सोहेल यस सर लिस्टिंग मुझे उन्होंने पूछा कि हैव यू वर्क्ड ऑन प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस तो हाँ बोलना है ना उसमें Obviously, hi, बोलना है, but then for those interviews you will have to study more about platform as a service. Our uh, course and we have focused mostly on infrastructure as a service. Network is infrastructure, virtual machines infrastructure, storage infrastructure. When you say pass, uh, specific services like Azure function, those are pass services. उसमें So if you understand infrastructure well, understanding PaaS will not be a big task for you. But scope of this uh, course was focused on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not a big task. You can easily if they they are asking PaaS. Okay, you say yes, fine. Uh, take three or four days time to arrange an interview to schedule an interview. Go through and read specifically about PaaS services of Azure. By the way, which PaaS services do you remember of Azure? Azure Function, hmm. uh, Serial. Uh, there was something called as Hub. Hmm. Hub, which Hub? I'm not sure, but still, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Ek, ha, exactly. I may be confused. Hmm. Function, pada tha. App, app services, pada tha. Hmm. Fir ek to function hota. Hmm. Itna hi yaad hai mujhe. Na, see, pass me aake hi ho jata. You will hardly there. There's a uh, Azure services, me Azure search, hai, CDN, hai, content delivery network, hai. Ye sare jo hai na platform pe aate hai. Web apps so hai, CD... mobile apps hai, logic apps hai, Azure functions hai, Azure web jobs hai. So, me five se bhi paap pad lo na, aur uske baare mein, so won't be a big task. Utna difficult hai nahi, but Azure, uh, I think wo Azure service bus ki baat kar rahe hoge, wo ek uh, ye hota hai. Uh, Did you say bus big or did data. you say hub? Hub. वो big data में use होता है ना data capture करने real time में। तो उस चक्कर में तो पढ़ो ही मत वहाँ big data वगैरह वाले चक्कर में तो पढ़ो ही मत ठीक है। Then as your Cosmos DB वगैरह है। तो the, there are services obviously past में भी काफी कुछ है ठीक है। But if you are not sure about it, stick to uh, past में you will have to read a bit of API management वो थोड़ा पढ़ना पड़ेगा। But if you are getting a call something Don't say no. Say yes. Take some time. We'll practice. But not difficult. Nahi hai. Pass be. Okay. Okay. And and again, you don't have to say that you're working with support. You say I'm I'm working with implementation team, be it pass or infrastructure or SaaS. So deployment of the those pass services, it's not a big task. That's right. And in this, me, ye, we, what is it? Na, kya bolte hai usse? I forgot. ठीक है मैं बाद में बता दू क्योंकि इसमें है एक टॉपिक ना जिस yeah, वैसे डोंट वरी जब हम इंटरव्यू के ये करता रहेगा ना तो जितने क्वेश्चंस व्हिच वी हैव लेफ्ट ऑन जो फ्रीक्वेंटली आ रहे हैं विल प्रैक्टिस देम अगेन सॉरी डेवलप सिटी से जॉबलीटिंग दे So even if you you know the concept and if you do that for a week or a month, they will be assured that yeah, yeah, this can be done. Work will come out. 
एंड द इंटरव्यूअर ऑल्सो नो दिस इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट के ये सब आपको और मुझको पता है दे ऑल्सो नो इट इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ इवेल्युएशन कि किसको कैसे इवेल्युएट कैसे करे कैंडिडेट को हेंस दे आस्क एवरीथिंग और इफ दे फाइंड के यार ठीक है डुएबल है यू विल गेट अ जॉब डोंट वरी अबाउट इट दैट डज नॉट मीन यू डोंट स्टडी डोंट डू दैट ओके यू हैव टू गिव योर हंड्रेड परसेंट रेस्ट दे ऑल्सो नो सी वेन आई ऑल्सो हायर आई हैव सीन पीपल दे डोंट इवन नो द बेसिक्स बट I know my project. Okay, I am hiring someone for a project which we know that we have this client for three years, and now this client has asked us to hire a particular skill sets a resource, or not even hire. They have asked some someone from internal, but maybe we don't have internally. I am hiring from externally. That this client has a project of three years of migration. I know that I want two resources who can create virtual networks and create virtual machines, create virtual networks and virtual machine. Even if I take the interview for that person, I'll ask n number of things. I'll ask migration. I will ask pass. I will ask SAS, X, Y, Z, DR, and everything. And with that, I will ask creating virtual machine, virtual network. I have got my answers. I see th these are these candidates are in my budget, ready to join soon, and they know the concept. When client talk, they won't make fool out of themselves. They won't, <clears throat> you know, let down the companies them. I am okay. Why? Because I'm getting a three years contract, and these two fellows. these are okay for 3 year and i'm pretty sure in 3 years they will learn and i can utilize them after 3 years in in some other project it, th this is the way this is the literally discussion we have the, we we do when our director uh, explains us ke yaar aisa sa project aa raha hiring karo literally these are the words ke this is what we are looking for if you find a candidate like this hire him After three years, in these three years, he will automatically learn. He or she will automatically learn many things, so we can utilize them somewhere else. If not, three years, ma'am, itna kama chuke hota hai unse ki we can spend some training on them. So this is the mentality the interviewer will have. Okay. So don't worry, okay. don't go for everything. If you don't know something, DevOps nahi aata, nahi aata. That's fine. Leave it. JD me hamesa JD to aisa hota hai jaise koi NASA ki hiring chal rahi ho. Right, they will ask mm -hmm. everything. They will ask DevOps. They will ask Kubernetes. They will ask CI/CD pipeline. They will ask Terraform, Ansible, everything. There are memes also on in LinkedIn. If you see, okay, job description. Me, wo jo bada sa Godzilla wala picture hai na, they they show mm -hmm. it. Okay, yar, job description to ye hota hai. Or actual job me, wo jo chota sa toy hota hai na, wo laga rakha hai. So that is very relevant. So don't oh, overthink uh, for every topic. I will make okay. sure that we cover all the topics which are useful to get a job and to perform your job. That two, mm -hmm. two things we have to focus. Coming uh, back to uh, our topic. Or Tenet... projects के बारे में just take one question, take doubt. कि मुझे ये भी पूछा कि could you tell me uh, the projects which hmm. you have worked upon? How will do it? Don't worry. Well, definitely. Okay. We are we are not okay. uh, closing this session uh, without discussing the project. We are not doing that. डिस्किंग that it there is pay as you go very small companies will do okay there is an enterprise agreement very huge companies they will do in between there is csp also csp is our cloud service provider now what are these if you remember i was explaining i'm not sure hub and spoke wala me the aap dono you you saw it right amit and i mm -hmm, i hope right. samitra you have also been through it right there i talked about there i spoke about csp csp is a company or some something like this you can say csp they not only help uh, other companies 
in this case, UT Cloud, it is just helping TSoft Info Solutions, TSoft Solutions to onboard and client. CSP is something they will say, okay, what do you need? You give me your code and everything and I'll do end-to-end -end solution for you. End-to-end -end solution. I'll buy a subscription for you or I'll host your services in my subscription. I'll create a new VNet for you. I'll, or, I'll do this one. Everything will be taken care by me. Be it SLA or everything. What we are promising, we are prom promising you 99.95% SLA for your application uptime and XYZ amount I will be charging you per month. That's all. This is also one method. Like Blaze Clan, you had mentioned, is it? Exactly, exactly. Blaze Clan. That's what they do. So, one is that UT Cloud is suggesting TSOFT that you go with the enterprise agreement. Major companies will never deal with CSPs, okay? Major, as in I'm talking about uh, uh, any, any big company you take, uh, well known companies, a uh, finance company, it could be. Uh, Indian companies, if you talk about Bajaj, Radhi, Reliance, these companies will never go with CSPs. Okay, they will ne never do that. Okay. Uh, small companies, they cannot go uh, as enterprise agreement. Enterprise agreement is something that th this company, in our scenario, T-Soft, will do directly with Microsoft. No third party involved in this. We are there, UT Cloud is there just to help, to onboard. Rest everything they will do directly with Microsoft. They will pay to Microsoft. They will take support from Microsoft. Microsoft will create everything for them. Everything will be done by Microsoft. Any issues Microsoft will do. Bulk licensing they will sell. They will give discount or whatever. Microsoft and the big company. They will deal directly. We are just here to negotiate on behalf of our company. Because we understand technology. We understand cloud. This company, this is a development company. Okay, and this is just, just an example. This could be any company. Maybe it's a transport company. It, it maybe it's it's uh, uh, an an Airbus company, uh, a Boeing. They create airplane. They they create uh, weapons. They don't know technology or banking. Most of the time, banking. Let's say Bank of America. They are best of the best when it comes to banking, but they don't understand technology. So they want someone to deal with Microsoft when it comes to technology on behalf of them. That is where we come. So this is one of the examples. Enterprise agreement. Okay, and when I say Microsoft does everything. That does not mean Microsoft will do the smallest implementation also for them. Microsoft can do that, but the charges which Microsoft will uh, charge them, those are very hefty. So what they will do, they will do an enterprise agreement with Microsoft. Uh, they will get an idea from Microsoft and rest of the work they will give to UT Cloud. I mean, these are the multiple methods I'm sharing it with you that how it works in uh, live time, live environment. Okay, so. Enterprise agreement is one. Pay as you go. Pay as you go is very simple. People like us do it. Now, in, in my uh, subscription also where you guys practice, see, this is my trainer subscription. Okay, I have it. That's fine. But other than my trainer subscription, I have one more subscription. This is my company subscription. Let's say that I want to uh, host a small application or maybe my training institute, I want to do anything. If you see, this is pay as you go. Here I have I, I have a corporate credit card. Using that I uh, utilize this or I run this. Okay. So this is pay as you go. Very small firm, a startup business, they will do it. This is pay as you go. Huge firms, they will always go with uh, enterprise agreement. Mid level, pay as you go. It's too small for them. They don't want to do it. Enterprise agreement, it's too big for them. Enterprise agreement has its own terms and condition. Minimum 6,000 to 6,000 employees, 2,000 employees, X, Y, Z. These numbers keep on changing. Right? So whenever we want exact details, we go to Microsoft's site. But you don't have to worry about it. Just letting you know for your information. So enterprise agreement has its own requirement. Not everyone is eligible for enterprise agreement. Like companies will assess Microsoft. Microsoft will also assess companies. Whether we can give enterprise agreement to them or not. Pay as you go, any can, anyone can take. Mid-level will think this is too small for me. It, it is not sufficient enough for me because we will have many restrictions when it comes to pay as you go. There are some services which are not available for pay as you go. 
enterprise agreement it's too big for them because they're a small so they have csps like blaze clan we were discussing what csps will do csps might have an enterprise agreement for example if we're talking about blaze clan blaze clan is a csp uh, sorry Bla yeah blaze clan is a csp so blaze clan might have or may have or it's up to them what how they are dealing with uh, microsoft enterprise agreement with microsoft that in a because in enterprise agreement you have to give commitment also that in in this uh, year or for three years i will use use your service and for three years i will give you minimum uh, two million dollar us dollars bill this is the minimum billing i would do based on that you get uh, discounts and everything right so maybe they have enterprise agreement with microsoft and then they will uh, cater small companies company a company b company c and then how will they save money like last example we discussed in hub and spoke that they will promise uh they will promise five or ten companies that i am giving you 100 percent sla xyz and for security i will make sure that i give you one of the costliest resource which is azure firewall so a company like who the, the client is of okay you're giving me firewall that's nice what will i do what this company will do their engineers they will go to uh azure calculator and they will check firewall how much is it costing Okay, if I take firewall by my own, firewall apne apne itna bada cost kar hai. And Blaze Clan is giving me XYZ services, AB services, a, a number of services with firewall. And they're just hardly charging me some amount extra. And I don't even have to worry about, uh, I don't even have to worry about the other things. Uh, taking care, your manpower, uh, human resources, nothing. Blaze Clan is taking for everything. So he says, it's okay, that's fine. You're charging me. Uh, ten thousand dollars monthly. I am fine with it. Okay. So similarly, this company is taking amount from all companies. Amount could be different depending on the their SLA and their agreement and whatever they decide. Then how Blaze Clan is earning? We just saw it in our previous session that they are using only one Azure firewall. They are promising all of them, but they are using only one Azure firewall. But because they have expertise of technical they, they have that expertise that how to utilize that one firewall for 10 different companies that not not making a uh, false promise they're not promising them firewall and not giving no that is not the case but they are experts they know how to utilize one firewall using hub and spoke network that is just an example guys okay there are plenty of we'll discuss that later if you want there are plenty of services which can be shared so they what they are doing Azure firewall, they are purchasing only one. They're paying rent only for one Azure firewall and they are giving services to all them. Then this is how they are saving. So this is one of the, uh, you can say, uh, methods you can start your footprint on cloud. Here also you have to buy tenant when you're going pay as you go or if you even if you're going enterprise agreement and if you're going with a CSP, then it's not necessary. CSP will say, okay, we'll do it everything for you. You just leave it. Okay, so this is first step. What is the next step? Onboarding. And when I say next step, don't go by chronological order, nothing. Don't worry. Just want to, I just want to see what comes to your mind. Anything, whatever comes to your mind, let me know. But this is correct. Very first thing will be tenant. Yes, next. Let's say we are going with enterprise or pay as you go. Or just to keep it simple, we'll say we are going with pay as you go. An active directory. Okay. And so, the users. Okay. Active directory set kar liya. Ye sab kar liya apne. You already got the details that how many users do you have? Usme se kitne global admin chahiye aapko? Kaise chahiye? Ye sab hai. Okay. AD setup. AD or it is called IAM. In, in, uh identity access management active directory setup done next what then resource groups resource groups okay what what else virtual networks virtual networks what else for subnets and subnets. then so what else one more thing is there no? wait i'll give you on something But uh, we'll be we'll need to think about departments and all as well. 
so how how where where that fits departments chalo uh, you have four vnet. departments vnet uh, so that is already covered uh, what else then the peering as uh, as required between these vnets chalo peering bhi consider kar liya what else n number of services right it can be an endless list i'll say mm -hmm. i want i, I want a web applic application firewall i want a firewall i want ddos it can be a n number of a list and endless list so it's fine you got the idea but one important thing is missing here between your tenant and resource group ad is fine tenant ad it's fine or maybe before ad also or after ad also it can happen and we have done that subscription subscription right no tenant and subscription do these are do different things guys okay subscription you will have to guide them you will have to plan it for them ignore the spelling guys okay you as in again architect team i'm talking about okay you took one you you are going with pay as you go okay? just to either pay as you go or you, you are going or maybe enterprise agreement forget the csp as of now okay you're going as pay as you go or enterprise agreement okay you have purchased a tenant what is tenant tenant is nothing this one if i give you access to my tenant will you be able to come and do anything on this one we have seen that page also that if you do not have access to subscription and if you are only on tenant how it looks do you remember that practical guys without subscription yes, you won't be able to see anything so subscription i understand it is implied yaar aapko to purchase karna hi hai nothing is implied you have to be very specific now they said they have four departments right you have to probe what kind of departments are they are they interlinked are they separated segregated they have mentioned in one city they are providing services that is fine but how is your staff is it only in one city or do you have different offices how do you want billing as yes, someone says that i have department four departments fine you can segregate them on, segregate them on vnet level also but the client is says client says i have four departments sales admin operations jahan pe sab cloud wagera wala aa gaya suppose operations and legal i say admin and operation it's fine okay these two billing i'm i'm okay i want specifically billing that how many services are being used and how much am i spending on my sales or sales and marketing okay why i want to track something spending uh, mistakes please ignore okay sales and marketing i want specific billing for sales and marketing i want to know how much i'm spending on this app or this uh, application and also on legal so i want separate billing for sales and marketing i want separate billing for legal admin and operations fine i can combine them so in this case you can suggest them to have four subscriptions and if someone says no i'm it's okay it's my company be it sales based marketing hardly four staffs i have it's okay you can suggest them one billing one subscription access level <laughs> sorry access level uh, differentiates or you know uh filtering you can do at vnet level but the billing level you can do it at subscription level so it is not implied that they will buy subscription you will have to guide them buy one subscription buy two subscription three or four they will explain their business need you give them a technical solution is it clear yes by the time it comes to you by 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 the time it comes to you guys you will already have a subscription and everything but you should know aya kaise hai okay so this is fine ye hua aapka onboarding okay this is you, this is a uh, onboarding for new company okay now similar thing i am taking for migration let's a same company everything same new scenario same company and everything same instead of new onboarding we have 
migration what do you think will omit from here by the way any anything you think yahan se chala jayega ya sab sab kuch same apply ho raha hai if it's a new setup it will be same right exactly see beat a new that is what i said ke okay? implementation team aapke liye almost similar kaam hai theek hai be beat uh, yeah be it new onboarding or migration aapke liye to wo naya hi hai the difference here was after this let's say firewall and ddos you are creating vms or maybe any service from scratch okay here you will you will create few vms from scratch but you will have some baseline baseline will be your on prem services either you can do this or you are migrating vms this is the only difference ha rest another case could be this is a second step of migration maybe a second slot of migration this company had 40000 servers maybe it's a huge airline company okay delta airline or something and they are doing their migration in segments first 1000 servers they have already moved now it's uh, time to move 5000 servers more they are doing this in chunks so when i say they have done their five uh, they, they have moved their 1000 servers which means they what steps will go from here then if they have already moved their 1000 servers so what do you think which steps will be uh, removed from here you are on mute guys if you are speaking in initial steps right tenant by default they have it subscription they have it subscription mm -hmm. they have it but again it can be questioned that do you want to move this mm -hmm. to same subscription you want to have new subscription depending on your application De that depends okay ad do you think ad will have to set up again no 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 we mean okay we cannot have different ad's right ad mm -hmm. once it is there it is there resource group again there there is already there are already for you thousand servers i see there are already 50 resource groups where you have dedicated where you have distributed or uh, yeah do you want these new 5000 servers to be divided on this resource groups or new resource group same same thing happens to vnet subnet peering as your firewall everything remains same is it clear guys the difference between migration and new onboarding is it clear mm -hmm. yes so now new onboarding we won't be discussing much about it okay mostly we will be focusing on migration so let's discuss about migration now let me close this sanmitra is it clear do you have any doubts any questions or on the things which we discussed now sanmitra you're on mute if you're speaking okay i uh, yeah i got your message thanks it's clear right okay so which service do we use guys for migration by the way what is migration very first thing technically what is migration so migration is a service of azure in azure portal you will see azure migrate this is a tool by the way it is a service in azure migrate is the tool and it's it's not only azure migrate available in the market this is azure's default tool and in your interview you will stick to this tool because we will be practicing on this tool we will be doing everything on this tool okay so you stick to this tool but that does not mean this is the only tool we have for migration for migration we have some other tools also which are available in market a list you can see maybe here let me show it to you here this is the list cloudmise uh, it's not that famous it's fine cloudsphere current i have worked on this i have all the documents for this also i have worked on this in my pvs company if you want i can help you with this one also but it's not required at all 
uh, just to add or show off, you can say, okay, I have worked on Azure Migrate most of the time. And yes, there was one migration project we did using Corrent. Okay, we can, I can show it to you. I, I have all SOPs and everything for you and which are publicly available, not giving you anything which are my company specific. I mean, this is available for Corrent, any new user publicly available. I can just explain it to you in a better manner. Device 42, I have never used this. I don't know how famous it is. This one, this one, and Cloudomize, this is very famous, guys. This one is very famous, okay? And one more, yeah, Turbonomic, this one, these two. But you don't have to mention anything about this. You stick to this that I have worked on Azure Migrate tool. I have done XYZ number of uh, uh, migrations. I'll, I'll tell you uh, how to answer that also. Because do you know how much time it takes for a migration? Let's say a thousand, sir, thousand servers infrastructure. How much time it takes for migration? Do you know that? The whole project. I think three to six months. Right. So I will come to that whether answer is correct or not. But you should know, you should have an idea and based on that only you can answer, right? You cannot say that in my two years experience, an experience of two years, I have done 20 migrations. Answer Suntai Samaj Jaga is good. Okay, so that should not happen. So we'll discuss how to answer that here. I have already given the answer, by the way. See, 15 plus migration. This was over a period of four plus years. So if you have two years, make it seven. If you have one year experience, you're showing one year experience, show it three. Dep we'll discuss this in detail, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary assessment and migration. These are two different things. We'll discuss that. I told you that this is only theory part and will require at least uh, minimum four to five sessions to complete migration when we actually start using this tool, okay? As of now, we're still with theory. And theory is the most important thing. In your interview, no one is going to share their screen or ask you to share your screen and tell you, do the migration. No, that is not happening. So one thing to keep in your mind, you have done migrations using Azure Migrate tool. What all things can be migrated from on-prem? First thing, first question, from where can we migrate things? We can migrate from our on-prem this is majorly asked. This is what we do normally. That does not mean we can only migrate from on-prem. And on-prem, we have physical machines. We can migrate physical machines. I have already explained, guys, what are physical machines, what are virtual machines, right? If anyone have missed that session, watch the video, watch the recording. Still, you don't understand, let me know. We'll repeat it, but watch the video once. Then we have virtual machines. I can show you a migration of physical machine. I will migrate my own laptop to Azure. This I will do and we'll show the migration of virtual machine. In virtual machine, what categories do we have? We have many, but famous we have VMware, vSpare. Ignore the spelling mistakes guys if there are any. VMware, Spare and Microsoft Hyper-V. This I, ha I have covered all this. Th that is the reason, guys, we kept migration as a last topic because jitna bhi humne padha hai first session se ab tak, everything will be repeated now. Okay, so VMware, vSphere, Microsoft's Hyper-V. What okay. is VDI? Kya hota? It's a virtual desktop uh, instances. It's a part of VMware, understand? Achha. We don't have to understand everything step by step here. Logic okay. Okay. Hmm. When by the, what is the difference between VDI and VM? If you want, I'll send a short article, a image. It's almost like uh, your virtual machine, but virtual machine will have dedicated hardware and everything. Uh dedicated to them. VDI is instance hota hai. Jab on karo, a golden image say wo fetch kar leta hai aur aapko bas ek ye milta hai ek machine to utilize the moment you log off it's gone maybe same hardware sanmitra can can come and use something like that okay so we can migrate machines from on prem on prem may we have physical machines we have virtual machines under virtual machines we have we have vspare we have <clears throat> hyper v could be anything we can migrate machines from 
cloud. Now, when I say cloud, could be any cloud. I won't. I am on AWS, but somehow I'm. I have realized that AWS doesn't have those features in my region which I want, and Azure have them. Azure has them, or maybe GCP. I'm coming from. It's not only about feature. Maybe I'm not happy with the customer service. I'm not happy with the billing. I see X Y Z service I'm getting in AWS, and I'm getting billed for thousand dollars per month. And I have done my calculation, and I understand maybe my competitor is just using Azure, or my maybe my friend. We are in the same business, transportation business. I am using XYZ service AWS, paying thousand dollars per month. And he says, "Why are you doing that? I'm paying six hundred to Azure, and I'm happy with it. I want to change it. Moving machines or workloads or services from AWS to GCP, or oh, sorry, AWS and GCP to Azure. It could be anything, but we are uh, discussing Azure. Hence, I'm." Taking other examples to Azure, but it could be from Azure to them also. Is it clear that from where can we migrate things? We can migrate from on-prem. We can migrate from uh, other cloud, and from on-prem we can migrate physical machines. We can migrate virtual machines. Is it clear, guys? Under virtual machines, we have vSphere, we have Hyper-V. These are majorly used. We do have Oracle and everything, but not all tools support them. This is clear. Yes. Okay. Now talking about machines. Under machines, we can migrate Windows. We can migrate Linux, Mac OS. But this is very specific to AWS. Azure doesn't have Mac OS till now. Okay. But anything you can. Uh, move and it's not necessary that you use a virtual machine against a virtual machine let's say i have a windows vm which is running a website now to move this machine to azure i can move the machine as it is or i can move the code of that website here to my function app or web app so from infrastructure I'm moving to platform as a service. This is also possible. This is also called migration. We, we will see this in detail, guys. Don't worry. Is it the only thing we can move? Virtual machines, virtual machines? No. What we can move? Databases. Any database which is there online, I can move them. Tools, again, we have multiple tools here. We have this Unify Cloud. But we'll stick to Azure Migrate Database Assessment Tool and Database Migration Tool. So it's Database Assessment Tool, which is also known as D uh, Database Assessment Tool. I guess it's a DMB or something like this, short form. Uska. Okay, and then Migration Tool, DMT. We, we have this everything in detail, don't worry. So these are the two tools you will stick to. These are default tools. You don't have to pay anything extra. But if you go for some other tool, like this one, you'll have to pay them. Say this is free. You'll have to pay them. So you stick to this one as your migrate tool, as your database migrate tool. So you can move servers, you can move database, you can move VDIs, you can move web apps. You can move the databases also. This I will explain later. We are about to finish with the time. We'll see you tomorrow or whenever we have next session. We'll continue with the theory again. It's, it's, we have time to start practical. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah. Okay, bye guys.